Today, 18-year-old Ricky Paisano hopes he will leave the juvenile justice system behind. After spending the last previous month locked up at LCJC and the last four years in and out of detention, placement, and prison, he's hoping for a new beginning. I'm 18. I got, I got goals set for myself, goals that I was trying to achieve while I was out there. And uh, this has just put a big pause on it. I hope the judge sees that and just lets me get out. The stakes are high this time for Ricky to get out. He's on track to get his GED in just a few months. He needs that piece of paper to take advantage of the welding trade he learned while at his last placement facility. If he can come out of placement and he has a trade, if any of the kids have a trade, then it makes them marketable. It means that they can survive and support themselves without having to turn to a life of crime to do that. how short you used to be. Yeah. You know, I, I really do believe there's a, a, a big part of Rick that would like to, to turn the tide, would like to continue on with the welding, would like to minimally get his GED, if not his actual high school diploma, would like to live on the right side of the law. But the flip side to that is, is that's a lot of work. You don't think anybody's going to be here for you? Possibly. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't think so, no. So, you know, it's a lot easier to go out there and sell a few drugs if you don't get caught, make big money, as opposed to go welding, you know, put on all that hot gear and, and put in eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, whatever's required. I think a lot of it will probably depend on the influences that he comes across. If he, you know, ends up with a, a girlfriend that is a positive influence, that could be, that might be the turning point too. You know, one never knows. Given he's truly going himself, I don't know if he can do it. I've got four shackles already, so I need 13 pairs. It's Monday morning at Lake County Juvenile, and court is back in session. The kids are shackled and walked from the detention center over to the adjacent court building where they nervously sit and await their turn to see the judge. Both 17-year-old Michael and 18-year-old Ricky have been at Lake County Detention Center many times. As they await yet another hearing in front of the judge, they are placed in a holding cell area where they prepare for their time in court. The juvenile detention center is, is just that. It's, it's a place where we hold kids until we essentially figure out what we want to do with them next. Uh, what kind of services would, would be in the best interest of that kid in the community. Kevin Elkins has been Ricky's probation officer for years. Has Kevin spoken to you recently? Yeah, he spoke to me. Did he have any idea of what, what might occur? He said maybe 30 days commitment, 60 days commitment. Uh, I was like, I don't want either. I'm like, I want out. I've talked to him since he's been back here. Still has, you know, man said I wanted to get his GED and go into uh, welding. Uh, that was his vocation at the placement facility. So, I mean, he still has a chance to turn his life around, you know, before he gets too deep into the adult system. I got things to do. This is putting a pause on. I got to have my GED by June. I can't, I can't do no 60 day commitment. I got to have my GED by June or I'm not going to be able to get in the Iron Workers Union. Ricky's a bright kid. He's had not the typical family life. I know his parents weren't the best parents, but his, his grandmother has done everything she can do for him. Every time I rest my head under a roof, it's like another day I get, I, I got to live. I was away from the stuff that was getting me in trouble. He doesn't need to be in the street trying to make money to survive. If he chooses to, I'm sure she'll provide him with whatever he needs to be successful in life. She has helped me. She's been here the whole time I was locked up, and I realized that like, she's the one that cares about me. But I still have a mindset like, I'm, I'm trying to do things on my own. Like, I, I, I rarely ever let people help me. Ricardo is a kid that he's, he's got everything in place for him. 
It's time for him to move on with his life. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. This is the hardest 30 days I've ever did. It's, it's, I don't know why, but it's just, it's been driving me nuts. I don't know. I'm sure the court wants to lend to try and help him. You know, it, it, the ultimate goal is to make him productive in society. But I just don't know, given, you know, his age and, and all the opportunities that have been given to him. I really don't, the judge is really faced with a tough decision. I, I, I don't envy her. I feel like I'm being strangled. It's just a set, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's like time ain't going by like it used to. Seventeen-year-old Michael is back in detention for the third time. Before appearing in front of the judge, Michael meets with his court-appointed attorney, Don Ruck. Hey, how are you? Um, have a seat. Um, you're being charged with burglary. Um, serious charge, particularly given that you've got a prior charge for burglary that you're on probation for. The purpose of today's court hearing is whether you stay here while these charges against you pend or whether you're released to your mother's custody now, uh, the things that the court looks at in making its decision are going to be whether you're a threat to you know, yourself or to the public, and whether or not you're likely to return to all future court hearings. If the court finds that you're a threat or that you're not going to return, you're going to stay locked up. So what do you think should happen? I think I should be released on house arrest because I have a job. I'm working right now. Uh, many times the kids want to say, here's what I want, and as their lawyer, you try and, um, you know, you try and get that result, but you know that at the end of the day that that's not the right outcome because... Um, Ultimately, if you return a child or place a child back into the environment that led the child into the system to begin with, you're fostering the problem, you're not addressing the root problem. Michael is being held for his alleged involvement in a recent burglary. Because of his history and his refusal to answer police questions, he was hauled into detention on suspicion of involvement. So you know nothing about the burglary? No, no, nothing about the burglary. Okay, you don't know who did it or anything like that? No. Because certainly what complicates this whole picture is if this were the first time you'd ever been involved with the system, it yeah, it'd be a lot easier to say, look, it's a misunderstanding. There's no way in the world that this could have happened to you. But we, can, we lose that argument given the fact that you're on probation for burglary. No, nah, because I was doing good before everything. I had a job. I was getting ready to go back to school. So I'm just hoping they take that into consideration. Well, we have to let the judge know that and, and, and uh, make it so she does take it into consideration. Okay? okay? All right. Hang tight for a little bit. Go back to the Yep. What time do we go into court? I would say probably within the next five or ten minutes, hopefully, you'll get in. Ricky Paisano has been in and out of the juvenile justice system his entire teen life, and now he's back in LCJC for running away from the treatment facility he was sent to the last time he was here. Ricky knows he has reached the end of the line. Having recently turned 18, juvenile rehabilitation services are no longer an option. The question is, should he be set free sent to juvenile prison, or waived to the adult justice system. I'm 18, and I got goals set for myself, goals that I was trying to achieve while I was out there, and uh, this has just put a big pause on it. I hope the judge sees that and just lets me get out. Well, when a person turns 18, there's not a lot of choices for us to make to plug them into services, because everyone's looking, oh, We've got this little window of time to work with them, and it's not long enough to effectuate a change. Whatever I do, I accept the consequences fully. I did it for a reason, and that's just it. I mean, don't do it if you don't want to accept the consequences. This is the matter of Ricardo Paisano III. Do you admit or deny um, the allegations? Ricardo admits those allegations. Would you like to um, elicit from him what happened, and why does he fail to return? Were you given a home pass to come back from Nevada to visit your family here in Crown Point, Indiana? Yes. You were scheduled to return to Nevada. Why didn't you go back? What was it that made you make the poor choice uh, to not return? 
I was already there for 16 months. It's only like a seven or eight month program. It was my fault. It was my fault that I was there for 16 months. I was messing up when I first got there. I did complete every aspect of the program, uh, sports, vocation, school. I completed everything. I asked when I was going to get released. I was told September 1st, and I just felt like that's September 1st. I was another four months away, and I was just like, I've already been here double the time of what you're supposed to be here, so that's why I ran, Your Honor. So why is it that the program turned out to be double for you? Because I, I, I wasn't working my program, Your Honor. I had an anger issue, and I just I couldn't control my anger. I couldn't control the things that I was doing. I was just snapping off. Um, Sometimes I wasn't taking my medication, and it just it, it caused a real problem for me. And so you made the decision then that you weren't going to go back because you wanted to get out sooner. Yes, Your Honor. But you accomplished some, some things while you were at Silver State, did you not? Yes, Your Honor. What did you accomplish there? I was the highest in my welding class because I was there for 16 months. I was there more than any of the other kids. So you learned something while you were in placement? Yes, I did, yeah. You said that while you were out, after you didn't go back in May of 2008, to quote you, you caught a charge yes, in I Illinois. Did. Yes, I did. What, what does that mean, you caught a charge? I committed another crime. OK. And what was that crime? Uh, unlawful use of a weapon. And what kind of weapon? It, it was a handgun. So you were charged uh, as an adult? As an adult, yes. Because in Illinois, at age 17, you're considered an adult, is that right? Yes, yes ma'am. And so you were there, and you were three months in the Cook County Jail. Yes, ma'am. How did that work for you? It wasn't, it wasn't nice. I woke up. Welcome to adulthood, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you learn anything from that experience? Yes, I did. I, what did you learn? I don't ever want to go back to prison again. So what are you going to do to make sure that doesn't happen? Uh, hopefully, when I, if I do get released today, um, take my GED, um, go do the interview with the Iron Workers Union. If I get the job in the Iron Workers Union, save up my money and do what I have to do to do what every other person does, works every day, start a family. And is that a possibility? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mr. Elkins, um, I've read your report. The recommendation is that he be given credit for time he served um, and that he be released today. Mrs. Guzik, are you um, in agreement with the recommendation here made by the probation officer? Judge, it really bothers me that this young man is sitting here today. He's had numerous services offered to him by this court. He's 18. He has no education. He has an adult record in another state. He has a serious juvenile record. And unless he gets his life together very quickly, I know after being a prosecutor for 25 years that he's headed for a very bleak future. And it just bothers me to see somebody at 18 walking out of this court that's provided him so many opportunities to change, and he hasn't availed himself to the opportunities. But because there are no further services that the juvenile court can provide him uh, at this time, I am in agreement with probation's recommendation. Mr. Leterzo? Um, I'm in agreement with uh, probation's recommendation. He did not walk away from these programs without getting anything out of them. So I think he's sincere. And, in wanting to uh, turn himself around. And, and I also think that the stay in the Cook County Jail and the Illinois DOC was an eye-opening experience because I kept telling him, Rick, if you keep going the way you're going, I'm going to see you across the street over in the uh, criminal division. And I don't think he got it. And uh, I think he gets it now, now that he's had a taste of uh, Cook County. It's strange sitting. I got in this case three years ago, maybe four. Um, and it's uh, strange sitting next to him right now because he's taller than I am. And uh, <laughs> when the case started out, he's taller and bigger than I am. And when the case started out, I, I dwarfed him. So uh, he's grown up quite a bit. While it hasn't been the, the greatest success in terms of uh, the services that were provided, I think he did get something out of it. And I think uh, since he has good support in this community, uh, I, I believe that um, there's a good chance that he will not reoffend, and hopefully he'll be a productive adult and not find himself, as they say, across the street. So I think he's sincere in wanting to turn himself around. I also think that the 
stay in the Cook County Jail and the Illinois DOC. Repeat offender Ricky Paisano may or may not continue to live a life of crime, but what is certain is that he will never appear in juvenile court again. Ricky is now 18 years old and an adult in the eyes of the law. Therefore, Judge Bonaventura is out of options when it comes to rehabilitation. She could let him go if she feels he is not a threat to himself or the community. She could send him off to juvenile prison, or she just might wave him to the adult justice system across the street. Um, thank you. I think that um, listening to you, your description of him sitting next to you and him being bigger than you really um, strikes a chord with me in that it's, it's really sad. Here's a young man. Um, who has sort of grown up in our system. By some people's opinions, it might be that he has failed because he left the program before he was supposed to, but um, that isn't going to make me give up on, on children. Uh, and that's up until a few weeks ago was what he was, was a child. And just because you reach that magical age does not make you an adult. It's, it's what you do after that with your life that makes you a grown up and a man and an adult. Uh, there's a lot of uh, bumps in the road of life, and um, hopefully you'll get over those bumps because we're not going to be here to hold your hand anymore. You're going to have to do that by yourself. So good luck to you, Mr. Paisano. I hope that you get your life turned around, um, and this will be the last time we see you in this court. All right, good afternoon. This hearing's adjourned. Turning 18 could have meant a trip to the adult prison system. Instead, Judge Bonaventura decides Ricky should begin his adult life with a fresh start. Thank you, God. <laughs> I got so nervous when they put me on the stand. I got nervous. I got so nervous. It, it was wild. As soon as my lawyer read off the report that my that my uh, probation officer said he recommends I get released, I was like, wow. Because me and my probation officer wasn't, we wasn't like, like this. We wasn't like that. You just won the lottery, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> Yes. I don't want to read about you doing something stupid, brother. You're not going to. <laughs> I promise you won't. Got a girl, got a good girl. I'll be fine. After spending four years in and out of detention and the last 34 days locked up at LCJC, 18-year-old Ricky is finally free of the juvenile justice system. A new start on life for you, yeah. kind of, so to speak? Yeah. Given the way things went today? That's the first time I, the, I, I that's the first time the court says something good about me. I could have given him more time in our detention center, but I think that the taxpayers have spent enough money. Um, and, and he's already being supervised by another system. He's on parole, so hopefully that'll give him some, you know, supervision to the extent that he won't go out and reoffend. You know, we can't save everybody. I know that. But you know what? I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> I'm about to be free, even though it's a cruddy day. I'm, I don't care. I'm so happy, you don't even understand. Spent four birthdays locked up, 15, 16, 17th, and 18th. Next year, I'm going to be at the crib on my birthday. <sighs> this feels good. I'm actually getting released from somewhere. Look where we go. Just goes to show you, you can't sell people short. You never know what's going to happen. You wouldn't have expected most of what occurred this go around, would you? Yeah. See, it just goes to show you. One Ricardo Pizano. Thank you. We have that. Good luck. Take care. Thank you. Well, I certainly hope that he's learned from his mistakes. I hope that we gave him something, some tool, some resource within himself to, to pull from to get his life back on track. And um, I hope that he makes it.